You are listening to Aftersight. This recording is intended solely for individuals who are blind or have low vision. Thank you for joining us for the August 15th, 2024, Thursday reading of the Montrose and Delta News, as seen in the August 12th, 2024 edition of the Montrose Mirror. Today we will be reading the following main articles. County says goodbye to manager, joins litigation against state for diversion of severance tax funds. Written by Caitlin Switzer. Braden Brown climbs the soccer ladder. Written by Cliff Dodge. And following up with other miscellaneous articles. And let's begin. County says goodbye to manager, joins litigation against state for diversion of severance tax funds. By Caitlin Switzer. Montrose. Montrose County said goodbye to County Manager John Washbush during the regular Board of County Commissioners, the BOCC, meeting on Wednesday, August 7th, with BOCC Chair Roger Rash, calling the, the moment bittersweet and declaring... At one point, I quote, I do dearly love that man. All commissioners were present as Rash called the meeting to order. Commissioner Sue Hansen led all in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Roland Casales of Victory Baptist Church delivered the invocation. Quote, Father, we thank you for this morning, for the opportunity to gather together the citizens of Montrose. Lord, I especially want to thank you this morning for John and his efforts on behalf of all of us from the county. We thank you for the years that he put in. Thank you for all that are gathered here today. Please give wisdom and help things go smoothly. County Manager Farewell Washbush spoke. Thanks for having me back. It's been two days. It looks like everybody's holding up well. Any success I have ever had at this organization has been as the result of the employees. We have all we have an incredible staff. It is my privilege to be part of that team for so many years. That's who makes this place run. I also want to thank the three of you. Not an easy gig being a county commissioner. You've done a really, really great job of supporting the employees, looking out for the long term stability of the organization and putting us in a great place to succeed for years to come. You've never sacrificed the future with the present decision. I could not have asked for a better three-person boss than the three of you. Gonna miss you guys. Thanks for everything. Washbush received a round of applause. Commissioner Sue Hansen said, Your significant contributions to the community of Montrose County do not go unnoticed. You've made sound and economically feasible county decisions. She listed accomplishments that Washbush has spearheaded over the the years, sometimes speaking through tears. You've helped me be a better commissioner, Rash said. I just want to thank you. It has been an absolute pleasure. When Keith and I first got here, it was a show. Your leadership was paramount in us succeeding in what we wanted to do, in getting the county on the right path. You had the vision that our employees deserved better. John's leadership and the mentoring he has done, you set the example, you will be missed. I'm not saying goodbye, we've got some fishing trips. God bless you and your family. Thank you, brother. You are a brother to me, and I absolutely mean that. Thank you for everything you've done. BOCC Vice Chair Keith Caddy said, John, when I came to Montrose County, you were one of the only stabilising things in this whole county that made it work. You were somebody that I could go look to for confidence and direction and guidance, and somebody that I trusted. I do trust you, John, and your leadership and your abilities to handle a tough situation And thank you for the courthouse. I think you're a great leader and you're going to do well in all your endeavours in the future. Commissioners presented Washbush with a framed photo of the county raft trip and took a photo with him. As Washbush exited, 
Brash said. See you, John. It's a bittersweet day. I do dearly love that man, and he is a true blessing for the county. We know that with the training he has done and the mentoring, this organisation will, will move forward. Public comment period. There were no comments heard from the public on non-agenda items. Interim County Manager. Interim County Manager Emily Sanchez had no changes to the meeting agenda. Consent Agenda. Consent Agenda items were approved unanimously with a resolution number 43-2024 assigned to Consent Agenda item 8. Montrose County Local Liquor Licensing Authority. Commissioners approved renewal of the retail liquor st- store licence for Sydney Louise Siri, doing business as Pleasant Valley 84100 East US Highway 50. Cimarron, Colorado, licence number 03-05359. All appropriate documents, reviews, inspections, background check and fees have been submitted pursuant to to CRS 44-3-302. No concerns were reported by the Sheriff's Office or the Planning Department. General Business and Administrative Items. Commissioners voted unanimously to approve a request by Montreux's Regional Airport Director of Aviation, Lloyd Arnold, to approve Grant Agreement Number 3-08-0043-063-2024 with the Federal Aid of Aviation Administration, the FAA, in the amount of $1,675,714 for the project to acquire snow removal equipment, which includes the multitask equipment and rotary plough. Commissioners also voted to approve a grant agreement number 3-08, Dash 0043 dash 064 dash 2024 with the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, in the amount of $555,390.16 for the project to reconstruct Access Road. County Attorney Marty Whitmore introduced Resolution 44 2024 for consideration, which seeks permission to participate in litigation. Whitmore said that a number of counties are challenging the state of Colorado's diversion of the severance tax funds generated by oil and gas drilling production that have historically gone to the counties, instead moving those funds to the state's general fund to balance the state's budget. The General Assembly has imposed a number of unfunded mandates on counties, Whitmore said, and then this funding being wiped out as well we think is worth a challenge in the courts it will be also a highlight for the it will also highlight for the general assembly the displeasure of some of the counties with the general assembly bocc chair roger rash said that the general assembly created the crisis in the first place quote and then to come back and fix the crisis with our tax dollars and then to kill the industries Colorado has been directly responsible for driving the cost of the house thing up, driving the cost of food up, driving the cost of everything up, and then squandering our tax dollars and then stealing this money from the counties that was legislated to be for the counties. All of these crazy unfunded mandates that are just lumped on us that we have to carry on our backs. Maybe people will wake up. End quote. Commissioners voted unanimously to approve Resolution 44-2024. Chair of the County's Historic Landmark, Advisory Board Kent Kinsey, accompanied by other members of the Historic Landmark Advisory Board, presented for consideration Resolution 45-2024, designating the Button Cemetery as a Montrose County Historic Landmark. The resolution states that the Gunnison Tunnel project is, quote, now an integral part of the irrigation for agriculture in Montrose County and 
the 18 marked graves and areas defined by the wooden fence of the Button Cemetery represent a period of significance from 1901 through to 1905. Kinsey read the resolution into the official record. Commissioners voted unanimously to adopt a resolution 45-2024 and honoured the historic landmark advisory board with a round of applause as well. Also approved was a proclamation declaring August 2024 as Child Support Awareness Month in Montrose County. The proclamation was presented by Child Support Services Manager Christine Sorensen, who thanked commissioners and recognised Human Services Director Jennifer Sherwood for being, quote, an awesome director. Planning and Development Consent Agenda. The Planning and Development Consent Agenda, with two minor subdivisions, was unanimously approved. Planning and Development General Business. Following comments by the applicant and a neighbouring property owner, as well as some discussion, commissioners voted to continue the final agenda item. The Les Logan Amended Platt, AM 24-003. Proposal to adjust lines of the two lots in the Logan Minor Subdivision at parcel 37251320102-5223 Highway 348. To the BOCC meeting of August 21st, Due to the receipt of late information, we will revisit this in a couple of weeks, BOCC Chair Roger Ash said. With no executive session and no further business, commissioners voted to adjourn. Thank you, everyone, Rash said. Braden Brown climbs the soccer ladder by Cliff Dodge. Montrose. Braden Brown, a Montrose Red Hawk soccer player, is about to embark on a life-changing journey that combines travel, soccer, a high school education and the opportunity to see another part of the Western Hemisphere. Brown is heading to Argentina to work towards becoming a professional soccer player. Brown described his journey up to now and what lay ahead for the high school senior. I started playing soccer when I was about four years old. My mum was my first coach from the backyard to actual playing fields as I grew older and just a little bit taller. My high school soccer participation began my freshman year when I was made the Montrose varsity. I transferred from Ridgeway to Montrose just before my freshman year commenced. I played when I played the swinger position. I didn't get a lot of time playing as a freshman, which improved considerably as I moved into my sophomore and junior years. I changed positions from swinger to centre-back, where I really got involved in both the offence and defence. Our Red Hawk team played hard from whistle to whistle, and the team and our coaching staff never gave up and gave maximum effort throughout the session. The soccer wonder kid kinds put on what they call the Real Colorado Showcase. This is basically a statewide soccer camp that lets young players display their skills on the soccer pitch in front of the high school coaches, college coaches, semi-pro representatives, and the usual gathering of professional scouts and coaches. Brown said, the showcase is a very well-known tournament throughout this country and also internationally. It's a tournament that gets you a chance to play in front of all the right people as you compete against a top-level competition, Brown explained. Basically, a scout from Mendoza FC in Argentina reached out to me about a week before the tournament and let me know that he would be in attendance and wanted to see me play. Brown sent the scout the tournament schedule and where and when this game would be played. Mendoza FC is like an academy professional team. The Mendoza FC will have at least 50 players competing on teams at three levels. The under-16, the under-18 and the under-23-year-olds 
players compete with other teams as both amateurs, semi-professionals and professional league. The teams will play all over Argentina and in other countries in South America. Getting his high school diploma is one of Brown's goals. He and his parents have teamed up with Peak Academy and he intends to achieve his high school diploma via the computer and Zoom. Brown described a typical day as he will experience it starting on August 18th in Argentina. I'll wake up early, have breakfast, train, have lunch and another two hour training session, then more training, a study hall, weight room training, dinner and then another study hall. Brown is working towards signing a professional contract, assuming the breaks go his way. He also has a plan B, which involves going to a division one or two college and playing soccer at the collegiate level. Congratulations to Braden Brown and good luck as you pursue the lofty goals you have set for yourself. Colorado News Briefs. CSB tells pedestrians to follow signals designed for their safety, special to the mirror. Colorado. Sharing the roads means sharing the responsibility. While motorists need to be on the lookout for runners, bicyclists and walkers, it's equally important for pedestrians to avoid complacency about traffic rules put in place for their safety. Last year in 2023, Colorado hit a record for pedestrian fatalities, with 153 people killed, foot and bicycle. This is an 18% increase over 2022. There is no question about who will suffer the most in a collision between a pedestrian and a vehicle, stated Colonel Matthew C. Packard, Chief of the Colorado State Patrol. Whether it's self-preservation or common sense, pedestrians must be just as aware of their surroundings as motorists are. Distractions while driving, walking or biking are everywhere. Whether you have your head down looking at your phone or wearing earbuds that cancel out helpful traffic noises, focusing on where you are going is the solution. Every age group is vulnerable and incidents happen all at all times of the day. But the majority do occur at night. Drivers are responsible for watching for pedestrians and following traffic rules designed to protect them. However, pedestrians need to stay alert as much as drivers do. If a pedestrian contributes to a crash in some way, such as not following traffic signals, walking into the street while intoxicated or crossing without checking for traffic, he or she may be assigned partial or full fault for the collision. When the Colorado State Patrol looked at the top citations involving pedestrians from 2023, the most common was an individual's disregard for the safety device trying to protect them. Being a better pedestrian means demonstrating responsibility for your personal safety. The Colorado State Patrol and National Safety Council offer the following important tips. Whenever possible, walk on the sidewalk. If no sidewalk is available, walk facing traffic. Follow the rules of the road and obey all traffic signs and signals. When available, cross streets at crosswalks. Look left, right and left again before crossing the street. Make eye contact with the drivers of oncoming vehicles to make sure that they see you. Stay alert. Avoid cell phone use and wearing earbuds. Avoid alcohol and drug impairment when walking or biking. At night, wear bright or reflective clothing or use a flashlight. And a special note to parents, children younger than 10 should cross the street with an adult. Regional news briefs. Western Slope caregivers invited in from the cold, special to the mirror. Montrose. It has been called the loneliest job in existence, and according to the data from several sources, there are about 53 million folks in the US who work at it, 24-7, unpaid and mostly isolated. We're talking, of course, about family caregivers, the majority of whom labour to provide comfort and safety for brain failure victims. There is no known database that officially counts these folks in Western Colorado, but the best estimate from the people at Region 10's Area Agency on Ageing is at least 5,000 scattered throughout the six Western Colorado counties. The Agency on Ageing and the Caregivers Support Foundation, the CFSF, 
have taken on the task of providing care and assistance for family members who do their best to meet the needs of their loved ones. One of the best tools these partners have developed to meet the needs of isolated family caregivers is the annual Family Caregivers Summit. The live 2024 summit will be held October 1st at the Montrose Pavilion from 1 to 4.30 in the afternoon. The event is free to everyone and will provide a safe, comfortable environment for harried caregivers complete with moments of joy. Quote, the response to the summit last year was very positive, says CSF Chair Laird Landon. Quote, we took what we learned from that event and we are working at making 2024 summit even more useful. The format will be a little different this year with six small groups. Presentation discussion topics occurring between two formal presentations. The headliner speeches will include Dr. Landon discussing the vital link between caregiver and medical provider. The talk is entitled How Support Groups Work. The second headliner will be Caregiver Grief, will be presented by Carrie Bauer, MS Western Slope Programme Assistant and Community Liaison for the Heart Light Centre in Aurora, Colorado. Bauer has worked at hospices in Colorado and Iowa as Bereavement Coordinator and Volunteer Coordinator, as well as the Director of Bereavement Programme within a funeral home in Dem. Des Moines, Iowa. Quote, I've worked in the end of life and grief field for nearly two decades and have learned that my passion is supporting grievers of all ages. I will be sharing information on amb ambiguous loss and other types of grief, as well as strategies and resources for grief support, Bauer says. In order to give the attendees the biggest opportunity to gather as much information as possible, we have set up six concurrent group discussions surrounding the two key talks. Each of those will feature a short presentation by the facilitator, followed by questions and discussion involving the group members. Caregivers will have a choice as to which topics to attend and to participate in. They can move in and out of any group. The topics will each be presented and facilitated by experts and include Palliative and Hospice Care by Sally O'Connor, Montrose Regional Health Director of Care Coordination, Caregiver Grief by Carrie Bauer, MS, Family Member Placement and Resources by Sandy Walker, Region 10 Ombudsman, Dementia and Alzheimer's Disease by Angel Hoffman, Uncle Hoffman, Director of Community Engagement, Alzheimer's Association Grand Junction, Colorado, Navigating Medicaid by Shauna Clemmer, Brown and Brown PC Grand Junction, Colorado, and How to Talk to Your Loved Ones Doctors by Dr. Landon Summit. Co-chair Bill Bottomley says that the refreshment table has evolved into a larger space and will be offering a larger selection of snacks and beverages. There will be a larger group of vendors and consultants with whom the caregivers may interface. The event is free and attendees may register early for the event by logging into www.family-caregiver.com and clicking on the registration link. And that is all we have time for today. Thank you for listening to the Montrose and Delta News. Mm -hmm.